Hi, this is Tatiana Moroz, and you're listening to Journalistic Revolution. Hello, fellow lovers of freedom, and welcome back to another episode of the Journalistic Revolution. I am your ever happy host, Robert Wasman. Sorry for the long delay in content. We at JREP have had some technical difficulties, but we handled them as swiftly and as professionally as possible. The Broadway Bomb brings together more than 2,500 longboard skaters each year in the New York City area to push eight miles through Manhattan from West 116th Street to the Charging Bull in the Financial District. Since its inception in 2000, the NYPD has tried to hamper the event by hassling skateboarders, blocking roads, even handing out tickets. This year, the NYPD busted out orange netting to try and corral the skaters. They failed miserably. It was so bad that someone set the folly to the music of Benny Hill, and it couldn't have been more appropriate. Whoosh. Cops are better at finger-banging women on the side of the highway than stopping skateboarders in New York City. Cops are better at throwing Robert in jail than they are at catching skateboarders in New York City. Cops are better at burning down suspects in cabins than they are at stopping a bunch of skateboarders in New York City. Cops are better at raiding the wrong house than stopping skateboarders in New York City. Cops are better at killing kittens in a box than they are at catching skateboarders on the streets of New York City. Cops are better at shooting innocent dogs and cats than they are at stopping a bunch of skateboarders in New York City. A police officer killed while responding to a domestic disturbance in a small eastern Pennsylvania borough had pointed a stun gun at two dogs before being shot, court records reveal. Well, maybe they don't do this better. This story is two years old, but I think it's a great example of protection of private property. In police custody, the alleged gunman, 46-year-old George Hitchow Jr., said he had told Mr. Lasso to get off his property and not come on unless he had a warrant, authorities said. Get killed our dogs! He tried to kill my dogs and pointed a gun in my face, Hitcho said, according to the documents. I do not care if you are a cop or not. Unbelievable. The officer had been responding to a report of a disturbance and ended up at the back of Hitcho's house, authorities said. Police Chief George Berneo, who arrived after Mr. Lasso requested assistance, instructed him to shoot the dogs, and that's when the homeowner pulled out his shotgun and fired, authorities said. Mr. Lasso, 31, a married father of two, was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead a short time later. It sounds like something straight out of a Batman or James Bond arsenal, but police officers in St. Petersburg, Florida are testing a new vehicle-based cannon that fires GPS tracking devices at cars. The idea is that instead of continuing a dangerous high-speed pursuit, they're just going to tag the vehicle that they're chasing and then track its location from a safe distance. The system known as Star Chase features an air cannon mounted to the front of the grill of the police cars that fires a GPS tracking system unit that covered in a soft adhesive substance so they can immediately stick to their target. According to the police, once a pursued vehicle has been tagged, the police can stop their high-speed chase and fall back into a safe distance without losing tabs on the car. It also means that the driver being pursued will slow down if they think that they've lost the police. Assistant Chief Melanie Bevan says even if the technology stops one chase, she will be happy. Even if the technology stops one chase, even if the technology stops one chase... If our actions result in only saving one life... A massive oil discovery is a death blow for Saudis. It is six times larger than the Bakken, 17 times the size of the Marcellus Formation, and 80 times larger than the Eagle Ford Shale. All told, the recent discovery outside a sleepy Australian town contains more black gold than in all of Iran, Iraq, Canada, or Venezuela. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Their current estimates of 233 billion barrels are just 30 billion barrels shy of the estimated reserves in all of Saudi Arabia. Now, one renowned international energy expert predicts the proven reserves will be much bigger. It represents a bona fide redrawing of the global energy map as we know it. Moore says, and the mainstream media is completely ignoring it. Big surprise there. Now the speak is dry. Saudi Arabia for oil. Cuba pennies. Australian for oil. In a remarkably ominous 
farewell speech made by Secretary of Homeland Security Janet Napolitano in August of this year, the public was let in on an unexpected upcoming global catastrophe that everyone should be prepared for. Napolitano described that a massive and serious cyber attack on the U.S. homeland is coming, and that a natural disaster, the likes of which a nation, this nation has never seen before, is also believed to be on its way. The resignation marked the end of her four-year term at DHS under President Obama, raising the questions amongst the public about the real intent of Napolitano's decision. As part of her farewell speech, she joked for, to her replacement to grab a bottle of Advil. Former South Dakota Senator Sheldon R. Songstad, along with a conspiracy website moderator David Ells, put together a list of strange clues that point towards the government's preparation of an upcoming disaster crisis. 15,000 Russians in Baltimore by October 1st. 80% of our combat forces and their supply elements out of CONUS by October 1st. FEMA purchase orders over 14.2 million MREs and heater meals to de be delivered to Region 3 by October 1st. FEMA purchase orders for 22 million pouches of emergency water to be delivered to Region 3 by October 1st. FEMA purchase orders for 13.6 million for MREs and heater meals to be delivered to Austin by October 31st. Nine-week training course for UN peacekeepers in CONUS to learn urban warfare, English, and U.S. weapon systems beginning fourth week of July for 386,000 troops to be completed by October 1st. 11 million in antibiotics to be delivered to FEMA Region 3 by October 1st, ordered by the CDC. World Health Organization held second emergency meeting in its history to discuss MER's coronavirus. Determined a vaccine must be in place by October 1st. Hey, don't come too close, man. I got the coronavirus. And the list goes on and on. We'll make sure to put a link down in the comments below. According to sources, in 2017, the capital of Kazakhstan will look like the set of utopian sci-fi movie, which seems appropriate considering this is the place from where the Soviet Union conquers space. A titanic new capital will rise by the old city powered by sun and wind. Move over, Dubai. Your cliche New York wannabe skyline is the past. This is the real future. Welcome to Kazakhstan. You can now live next to Yuriki, the town rapist. It's very nice. Scientists at the University of Oxford had uncovered some information that we think is very interesting. And to continue this segment, we're going to go to our resident ass expert, Trip Hugh. Thanks, Robert. Scientists at the University of Oxford have uncovered evidence women with big butts are not only the most intelligent, but also the most resistant to chronic illness. 36, 24, 36! Only she's got an IQ of 153! The study examined the fat accumulated in different parts of a woman's body and found that women with a fat ass were less likely to get diabetes. Since they are more likely to produce hormones to metabolize sugar, what's more, women with big booties tend to have lower levels of cholesterol and fewer heart problems, according to the study. We translated the fat food report. Women with a big butt, wide hips, and narrow waist can live longer and even be more intelligent. Since the omega-3 fats stored in their butts support brain development, Mary Curry, for example, had to back that ass up in the lab all the time. And look at how brilliant she was. This supports the rumored story that Albert Einstein himself wore baggy clothing to try to mask the fact that he had it going on. This is Journalistic Revolution saying, don't look to be free in the future. Live free now.